Welcome back to the adventure! Today we are creating a custom Windows 7 installation disk with every update possible included. We can head over to MD5 online to check its MD5 hash. MD5 was initially designed to be used as a cryptographic hash function or mathematical algorithm. However, it's commonly used as a checksum to verify data integrity. Put another way, we're using it to verify that the disk image has not been modified from its original form. After selecting the file, it can take a minute or two to load. Once loaded, we have an MD5 hash. Let's Google that hash to see what comes up. Okay, a thread from My Digital Life. It says that this belongs to Windows 7 Ultimate X64 with Service Pack 1. That will do nicely. I did consider looking for a disk image that doesn't have Service Pack 1 included, but it's not really necessary, as the only difference would be Service Pack 1, and we'll be putting Service Pack 1 on the disk anyway. Next, we can open the disk image in Power ISO and extract its contents to a new folder on the desktop. Once everything finishes extracting, we can scan it for viruses. Alright, looking good so far. Next, we need to download the standalone install packages for several Windows updates, starting with the servicing stack update from 2015. Yes, there are newer servicing stack updates for Windows 7, but we need this one first, as it's a prerequisite for the next update that we'll need to grab, which is the convenience rollup. This update is huge, and is essentially service pack 2, for Windows 7. Next, we need the update rollups from July and August of 2016. They contain some updates not included in the convenience rollup and a fix for the very slow checking for updates. Time to take a quick detour and pick up the servicing stack update from 2019 and the SHA2 update. These are prerequisites for the monthly quality update. These monthly quality updates are cumulative, so I'm going to attempt using the latest of the mainstream releases from January of 2020. Last and most certainly least is Internet Explorer 11. After all, we will need it to download Chrome. With all the packages downloaded, we can move them to a new folder on the desktop. Now we can load the disk image into InLight, which can take several minutes to mount. Then we can click on the Updates section, point to the new folder on the desktop, and select the updates we downloaded. Then we get an error. What a surprise, it's Internet Explorer. Okay, excluding Internet Explorer then. This process to slipstream the updates took about 50 minutes to complete. The monthly quality update failed. Upon further review, I downloaded the wrong update. So let's try this again with the right one. Success. From here, we need to install Windows 7 from our custom installation disk. The installation itself is nothing special, so we can skip to after the install finishes. Then we can check for updates using the Windows Update Mini Tool. What this tool allows us to do is download the standalone install packages for the needed updates. Afterwards, we can slipstream them. 
Now that Windows is installed, the next order of business is to get a functional browser. Thank you Internet Explorer for being just competent enough to download Chrome. Before we can install the Windows Update Mini tool, we need the C++ redistributable from 2012 or later. What I'm going to use is a slick all-in-one installer. Granted, going this route is like lighting a forest fire to cook a pork chop. I think this tool is really cool. It runs the included install packages one by one from version 2010 all the way to 2019. This process took a while and isn't necessarily relevant, so we can fast forward through it. From here, we can head over to Major Geeks and download the Windows Update Mini tool. What we get is a compressed file that contains an executable. We can extract it to a folder on the desktop and run the file. Interface not supported. Let's head over to this site that looks completely safe and download the 2016 version of the mini tool. This compressed file is a little different. It has two language options and the executable. So in my case, I will extract the English language pack and the executable. Now we can run it. There we go. We can click the check for updates button at the left of the window and wait. Several minutes later, we have a list of available updates. I noticed that Service Pack 1 shows up on this list. That could be an issue with the servicing stack, but we have the update from 2019. As a test, I want to try installing the updated version of the Windows Update Agent and see what happens. That made absolutely no difference. Now to start downloading updates. We can do that by marking the checkbox next to all the updates that we want. Then click on the copy link button. I'm skipping over the .NET Framework updates for now. After clicking the copy link button, we can open Notepad and paste. What we get is a collection of download links for each update we selected. Starting from the top, I'm going to highlight a link, copy it, then paste it into Chrome. These are direct links, so the downloads should start immediately. One by one, copy, paste, enter, then pause momentarily while the download finishes. Repeat. One time jump later, we have all the updates downloaded. We can go to the download folder, highlight all of the updates, and then drag and drop them to the new folder on the host PC's desktop. This is where we collected some of the updates earlier. Back into InLight, we can start the slipstream and wait for the process to finish. In the end, we had one cumulative update that was skipped. Here we are on a virtual machine with a fresh copy of Windows 7 installed that contained all of the updates we just slipstreamed. Let's launch the Windows Update Mini tool and check for updates. There are far fewer updates than before, which is to be expected. I still see Service Pack 1 here. Ideally, I want to slipstream as many updates as possible. I'm going to try slipstreaming this Service Pack 1 update and see what happens. 13 megabytes is far too small for it to be the actual service pack. When loaded up in Nlight, it calls it SP1 prerequisite. There is also a servicing stack update from 2011 included. 
After applying both updates, we have more updates. From here, we are downloading the install packages for most of these available updates, with the exclusion of the .NET Framework updates. Reason being, I want to slipstream .NET 4.8 first, and then the updates that apply to it afterwards. 